Palmer, but you can call me Ray. Most of my friends do. And welcome to my knitting podcast. This is just um, my little place on YouTube where I talk about my knitting and my other crafty adventures and um, share them with you. I am also a poet. I live in Edinburgh in Scotland and I have two lovely children, Audrey and Robin, and a lot of my knitting is for them. Um, as a poet, I tend to start and end every episode with a poem that is either by me or by someone else that I like and feels kind of fitting. Um, I promise it will just be a short one. And um, you might hear a little noise today. That's my cat who is currently attacking the Christmas tree. Uh, I don't know if you have pets and if they like to join in with winter festivities but my my cat willow she was we adopted her last year so she's quite new to our family and she's very lovely um but yeah she i don't know if she's not seen a christmas tree before or what but she's been uh she's been fully enjoying it i think she 100 percent believes that we got it for her just to play with just as, as a fun entertainment. So there's been lots of things knocked down, which makes quite a nice refreshing change from my little boy Robin knocking things down. Um, if you're a new viewer, um, my son Robin is five and he uh, has special needs. He goes to a special school for intellectually disabled children and he's absolutely gorgeous and lovely, but he is also a, a bit of a force of nature at times. So. Um, yeah, last Christmas we had very few Christmas ornaments that survived unscathed. Uh, this year he seems a bit more relaxed about it, but now we have the cat to just take over in his place. Anyway, um, yeah, I have uh, a lot of works in progress at the moment, a lot of, um, or a few finished objects to show you. I have finished a lot of things in this last week, but most of them have now been posted off as um, most of them were Christmas gifts. Uh, I try to podcast every week but I was away last week I just had too much on it's that time of year um, but I will show you a bit of what I've been up to um, but to start us off I have a book just here I'm sitting in front of my bookshelf today um, it was some of my bookshelves uh, I'm quite quite a collector of books I have a stash of yarn but I also have a stash of books um, yeah, as the Christmas tree is currently occupying my usual spot in the corner where I sit for my crafty endeavours. Um, so I, I want to share some um, poems today, a poem at the start and a poem at the end, from this book by Gillian Clark. It's called Zoology. It's a very beautiful book and Gillian Clark is a wonderful poet. Um, she was the National Poet of Wales for many years and she spent a lot of time in her life uh, running a sheep farm in Wales. So I think that uh, her poems can be particularly appropriate. She has lots of poems that she writes about sheep and I'm going to share a couple of them. In this book, Zoology, there's a whole cycle of poems about sheep and about kind of a year on a sheep farm and the kind of the seasonal shifts and, and sort of glimpses from that year. So I'm going to start with um, one called Winter. Breath of the white dragon, a first flake of snow. Another, another, feathers dissolve on the tongue of a yew, quitched in the lee of a crag. Then more, faster, swarming, till world is blind, silent walled in, wall-eyed, the flock adrift against stone, fleece under fleece of snow. The ice moon's breath turns all to glass. Where is warm? Where is grass? Where is light? All the short hours of day, hunger-driven, hoofing the frozen ground, she grazes for a scrape of green, the one place bare of snow where she has lain. Inside the snow, the fleece. Inside the fleece, something beating in its house of bone. 
Cold draws on every organ but the womb. Rocked in its cradle, in the blood-loud dark, the fetus, safe in its rose-red room. So I thought some sheep poems today might be quite appropriate, some wintry sheep poems. It's a good time for, sh for sheepy poems and for wool in general. Uh, it's a good time for all that cosiness. It's very cold here in Scotland at the moment, um, hovering around about freezing. Uh, we've had a little snow, but then it's gone away again. So I'm hoping that there'll be some back. We're due some this week, so fingers crossed. Uh, it's a little dark today. The lighting might be a bit strange again. It was the solstice yesterday, so it's the darkest time of the year and really we only get a few hours of light at this time of year in Scotland. Um, so we'll, we'll make the best of it. Um, now, I, I've been really delighted to have um, people subscribing and commenting and it just it's really lovely because um, when I started making these I wasn't sure if anybody would see them in particular and it's really nice to have this little following of people um, and to sort of chat back and forth and get to know you. Um, it's been really lovely and I'm, I'm nearing 100 subscribers now so I thought that um, when I hit 100 subscribers, which might be by the next episode, I would do a little giveaway. So hopefully in the next episode um, I'll have a, a little giveaway which you can take part in and all the details will be there. So that should be should be fun. Maybe distribute some yarn. Um, okay, let's start with some finished objects. Uh, I'm going to start with a really fun one. These are some hats that I made for um, my friend's children. They are um, very good friends of my children, um, and they are here. Now this pattern is called Brain Eater. Brain Eater by Vi Coffrin. Um, it's a free pattern on Knitty. You can find it there. And uh, the reason why I chose this is because these particular children, they're brother and sister, and they love octopuses. The, the little boy in particular, the oldest. He absolutely loves octopuses. And so I thought, um, well, a tentacle hat would be perfect. Now I knitted him an octopus, the Embrace Octopus, um, him the Embrace Octopus sweater in the summer out of this same yarn. This is Drops Alaska in this blue and orange. And he chose the colours. He wanted the orange for the octopus and he wanted a blue that was, um, and I quote, the colour of Neptune. So I did my best to find it. And this is actually, it's a really lovely blue. Um, I think it's really sort of something about it is really warm and bright and um, it's a really nice colour. But I had some leftovers from that project so I thought well I'll, I'll whip up a hat for him for Christmas out of the leftovers and then I thought well I'll make a matching one for his sister but the colours are, are reversed and there's this lovely orange as the main colour. Um, his sister Flora is um, very sweet and very little. I've been slightly worried that this hat might be too little. It's a bit too little for Robin but Flora is uh, a couple of years younger than Robin, so I'm hoping that it will fit her okay. Um, and some nice pom-poms on the top. You've got to love a pom-pom. I think it's essential. And I really liked, the original pattern doesn't have the pom-poms, but I thought it looked a bit like the kind of the, the body of the octopus, and these are the tentacles coming down. I thought it looked a bit like that. Um, I don't know, what do you think? So the pattern is an adult sized pattern and they don't have smaller sizes uh, for children. So I adapted it by, um, I used a slightly smaller needle than called for. And then for Errol's, um, and Errol is, I want to say eight. So for Errol's I did one fewer repeat. So each pattern repeat in the chart is two, two tentacles. And so I did one fewer so two fewer tentacles in total, one fewer repeat, um, than was called for in the pattern to make his. And then I did, I think, two fewer than that to make Flora's. 
So it was quite straightforward to do that because um, the pattern's really clearly laid out and it's just, just this repeat of these two tentacles. So you can adjust it really easily and it didn't really take a lot of maths or um, hard thinking to make that work. I've been really pleased with how they've knitted up and I think that um, they'll like it very much. I, I hope so anyway. And hopefully they'll get a lot of nice wear out of them. It's um, certainly the weather for it lately. It's very frosty. So that's my brain eater hats. It's my first finished object lately. And I made a lot of other hats and um, cowls and mittens and all sorts for family and friends and um, mostly they've been posted. In Scotland we've had our lockdown we were going to have it eased off over Christmas for five days, but instead um, the cases have been rising of the COVID, so the lockdown has been made more severe, and um, now we can't travel for Christmas. Um, there's a complete like, travel ban across Scotland, and you can't go in and out across the border um, down with England. And um, yeah, and then we're going into tier four, which just basically means a very severe lockdown a bit like we had earlier in the year in March. Um, so that's that. It's been a bit stressful I think for everybody. Um, the schools are closing for a little while for a few weeks um, although we're still not sure about Robin's school because it's a special school and they might have slightly different rules but um, yeah it's all it's all it's a stressful time stressful end to a stressful year. Um, I. It's, it's at times like these that I'm so grateful for knitting because I find it so soothing and there's something lovely about the, the peaceful, repetitive motion and that you're creating something and making something and I think that's, that's just powerfully good for my brain when things are very overwhelming and worrying and stressful. Uh, so yeah, I hope that wherever you are and whatever kind of stage of lockdown or whatever is going on for you, um, in your part of the world that you're able to find these moments of creativity and calm and peacefulness. At the moment I'm really enjoying it actually when my partner takes the kids up to bed in the evening. I light all the candles in um, the living room by the Christmas tree and I sit and knit for an hour or so while the kids are falling asleep and that is really special and I like it. Um, the school changes haven't really affected my daughter because she's home educated but that means that she's been really affected by the limits on gathering because all of our home ed groups, um, when only two households can meet, we have been a bit stuck and we used to go to groups every day of the week and do you know, a science club and our book group and all of that and I think people have this image of home education that it's just you know staying at home with your parents all the time and never seeing anybody um, but that's very much not our experience um, um, yeah she she's very social little person and we, we see other people all the time and there's there's a really strong and active home education community in Edinburgh and and we miss everybody we miss our friends we've still been doing like playdates in the woods and um, the rules have been such that educational groups can meet but it's hard to find a place where we're allowed to meet so we've been meeting outdoors in the woods once a week with one of our smaller groups and you know making a fire and we cook over the fire and we tell stories and we do some kind of seasonal learning and it's it's been nice and we do like to spend a lot of time outdoors but it's not the same, it's not the same at all. And I think I'll be really glad once um, the vaccine is distributed and we can all start to kind of move on and heal a bit from this really difficult year. Anyway, that was a little diversion. Let's um, move on. I have another finished object here. Um, this is the Watchfire hat by Dagbjot Goodman's daughter. Um, it's a really, really nice pattern and um, so the original pattern it's you don't roll the brim up and it's one repeat shorter than this but I wanted a, a rolled brim so I knitted the brim and then I knit an extra repeat before I did the decreases which was again a, a very easy modification to make and it's got this 
this pom-pom. This is for my daughter's friend Madeline, um, who is very sweet and a knitter herself, and she, she's very keen on knitting, and she makes lovely, lovely little things. Um, little, little toy cat, and she knitted it a little toy bed. Um, and she knits just, she's knit a hedgehog. She's, she knits very lovely things, and she's a very keen knitter. So this is for her, as part of her Christmas present. And it's knit in Drops Snow, which is a very thick, um, single ply yarn. And it's um, in the colourway called Curry, which is actually a really nice colour. I don't know if, it, if the camera is picking it up well at all, but it's got little flecks of different colours in it. So it's really, it's a really nice one. And I think it's very cute. So that's, those are t the two hats that I've not posted off, um, well, three technically, um, but I, I have knit, gosh, I'm not sure how many, but a lot, a lot of hats this year and a lot of um, cowls and mittens, as I said, and things like that. Okay, so let's move on to some works in progress because I have a couple of Christmas gifts that are not quite finished. Um, they definitely won't be finished in time for Christmas itself, but I'll get them set in the next um, week or so and they'll arrive when they arrive. I think sometimes it's nice to get things after Christmas um, as a little extra bonus gift. Um, and my dad asked me uh, towards the end of November if I would make him a jumper for Christmas, a sweater, and um, I said it might be cutting it a bit fine, but I'd give it a go. Uh, so I'm, I'm actually really nearly at the end of it, and, and I love it. It's, the pattern is really nice. The pattern is called um, Gald Hoppigan by Erica Guzelius, uh, which I'm almost certainly not saying right, forgive me. Um, and it is here. Ooh, little... Let's go progress keepers around. So here is my progress so far. So I am... Um, just at the part where we add the where we I've just connected the sleeves to the body um, and started on the yoke it's knit all in this kind of medium dark grey and um, then there's the red and white accent on the sleeves and at the yoke, which will go up to the very top of the yoke. You see that? So um, it's a lovely pattern. It's very nice and uh, I'm really enjoying it. It's gone much quicker than I thought it would just because I'm enjoying the pattern so much. It's very straightforward, very simple. Um, the only modification I've done is that my dad is quite short like me and although he's um, a little broad, he's quite narrow shouldered, again like me, I've got his kind of narrow shoulders and I find that jumpers fall off my shoulders very easily and I think he does too. So I'm knitting the body in a size extra extra large, XXL, um, to accommodate his his tummy <laughs> and I'm knitting the yoke I've sort of I've decreased up to the yoke so the yoke is in just in the size extra large so uh, so hopefully it will fit him and I've also made the sleeves slightly shorter because um, he's he's quite short with short arms um, so yeah so that those are the main changes that I've made I like this jumper a lot it's knit from the bottom up in the round you uh, knit the body first and then the sleeves just as you'd expect um, you attach them together and very straightforward you do decreases for the yoke the decreases for the yoke are on the, the plain rows the stripes that are in between the sections of kind of geometrical patterning um, I really like that it is I wouldn't even say that it's straightforward in the sense it's not that it's it's super easy it's that it, it's as you'd expect there's no surprises and sometimes you want a pattern that's really surprising and challenges you and has a very strange construction and sometimes like 
when you're exhausted at the end of the year and you just want to make something in time for Christmas. You want something that where you know you can do every step of it and you've done it before and that it's not going to, um, you're not going to have any parts where you think, oh no, well, oh, how, how do I do that? Is that right? What have I done? Um, it's just sort of, it's an as expected thing, which is really nice. Uh, I always show the insides of the colour work because I really like to see it on other people's jumper. So here's the insides of the colour work with all the floats. It's always I'm always desperately curious and turning things inside out to see what the insides look like. Maybe I'm the only one and it's very weird, but I really like to see the inside of colour work. Sometimes I think it looks even nicer than the, than the front somehow. Um, the yarn for this is, again, drops. I've knit a lot of drops this this winter. This is um, Drops Nepal, which is a um, a blend of wool and alpaca. I'm, I think it's about 60% wool and 40% alpaca or something like that. Uh, which means this is actually a really heavy jumper, which I knew it would be. I knew it would be a heavy jumper to start with, and so that's okay. It's what I kind of expected. I just wanted something really soft and really squishy and cozy to send, like a hug for my dad. Um, he lives down in England and I've not seen him uh, all year. So, um, yeah, I'm sending this in place of a hug. Lovely, warm alpaca. I know there are mixed feelings about alpaca, but I just, I really love it. It's just so squishy and lovely, and I could knit everything out of it. And I, I don't have an alpaca jumper of my own, which has to change, I think. I need an alpaca jumper of my own. Um, so that's, that's my first work in progress. Um, let's see, what else is there? Well, I, so my, my stepmother, my dad's wife, um, requested some long socks to go under her welly boots, long thick socks for when she's working on her allotment and she gets very cold feet in her wellies working on her allotment so she requested some and uh, as you'll know if you've seen any other episodes I'm really bad at finishing socks and mittens and anything where you have to knit the same thing twice and I don't know what it is, it's this psychological block <laughs> I really struggle to make the second one um, so I, I, but I am part way through the second one. Again, I'm not finished, but because I'll be sending them off at the same time as the, the jumper for my dad, I don't really feel too much of a pressing rush until that's done. But here's the first one. The pattern is, um, okay, it's a very long, long sock. The pattern is, um, let me see, I've written it down. Stranded Boot Stockings by Carrie Anderson. And it's a really nice pattern. Um, it's knit for, it's made for sport weight yarn. This yarn I think is a light DK. It's just random leftovers from my stash. I'm not even sure what it is because I don't have the ball band. Um, but it's, it's stuff I've had for years and years, very deep stash leftovers from a bigger project. Um, so I thought I would just use them up in this, it's in this grey and red again, but it's a darker red this time. Yeah, so that's the first one, and you can see the progress I've made on the second one, which is not so impressive, but it is at least begun. So. I'm getting gauge just fine with this slightly thicker wool. Uh, I knit very loosely normally, but I'm using small needles. Again, I can show you the inside. The corrugated ribbing at the top has such nice even floats and it gets like a little bit more uneven afterwards. Um, yeah, so these are these are coming along nicely and I'm I'm pleased with them. I think they look really lovely and I'm going to push and push to try and get them actually done. I think in a future episode I'll show you some of the single socks I have that I'm hoping to finish the other one of at some point in 2021. 2021 is going to be the year of like pairing up all my gloves and mittens and everything. Um, so I thought in that spirit I might show you some of the single mittens that I have made uh, this year 
uh, in the, just in the last couple of months actually and that I have not knitted the second one of. I thought that might be a bit fun. I've just got three here to show you. Um, this is the first one and I can't actually remember the name of this pattern but I will I will link it in the description box below along with the names of all the other patterns and where you can find them and things. So this is um, just a little lace fingerless mitt. Um, I think it's it's really nice, it fits re me really well and I would like the other one. That would be really nice. This is wool that I got from a charity shop which I think in the States you would call a thrift shop. I think that's the same thing, or a thrift store. Um, it's wool, it's definitely wool and quite rustic. Uh, but I don't know what, it didn't have any ball bands, it was just wound up into balls. And it's, it's coming across quite a bright yellow, but it's a bit more mustardy in person. So that's the first one. And then after I made that, for some reason, instead of making the second one, I made a very plain, just a plain fingerless mitten, with um, which again, the ends aren't woven in. But just, just a really plain one, just to see how that would go. And this is a plain fingerless mitten. But again, didn't make the pair to it. For some reason. Um, and then I thought, well, maybe I'll do a colour work mitten. And this is a very beautiful one. Here it is, um, in this kind of lime green and like petrol blue. The pattern is called Songbird, and I've got my notes again because I'm not sure if I can remember it all. Songbird by Erica, I'm going to say Heuser. Heuser? Um, so she's designed these, and she designs lots of very beautiful things. Um, but here I really like the, this detail on the thumb of the flower. Can you see that okay? And it's, it's very lovely and detailed and beautiful. I, I love it inordinately, but again I just have not made the pair to it. And there's absolutely no reason why, I'm not sure, it's just my brain. My brain has this block on knitting the second one of any pair of anything. I think the key is going to be knitting two at a time. So my jumper, my sweater for my dad, I knit the sleeves two at a time. And that was the first time I tried that. And I, I don't know why, in my mind I'd always thought that would be really complicated. But it wasn't at all. It was um, really straightforward once you get into the rhythm of it. So I think um, from now on I need to make my mittens and my um, socks and things two at a time to save on that. And I do like using Magic Loop. I, I knit this on double pointed needles and I like double pointed needles a lot but um, I don't mind Magic Loop at all. So yeah, I think that's the way forward. Once I've finished the second pair, so that's my challenge to myself to try and get these finished at some point in 2021 along with all my other socks and half-finished things. Um, so that's one of my, my little plans. So the other work in progress I have has really not had enough done on it um, because I've just been trying to focus on getting all of the holiday knitting done, all of the gifts that I've had to make, especially um, the post has been going um, a bit wrong <laughs> here and I think all over the world because there's been such a, an unprecedented volume of packages and parcels being sent um, with P as people can't be with their loved ones at Christmas and want to send things or as people can't go to the shops so they're ordering things from online so um, yeah I've been trying to do that <laughs> trying to get everything sent and as early as possible and um, I've neglected this project, but it is a really beautiful project, so I'm really looking forward over Christmas itself to catching up with it and getting it done. And this is the um, Camerbornia Advent Mystery Knit Along. And Sophia Camerborn has the most beautiful, beautiful podcast and makes lovely videos and also designs lovely things. And she's released this mystery knit along, it's a hat. Um, and I, I couldn't resist taking part, but I've, I've only finished the first 
two clues, maybe two and a half. Maybe I'm, I've done part of the third. Yeah, but anyway, um, and I think the whole thing has been released now, so I need to, to catch up and get it finished because I love it. So the, her colours originally were red, blue and white. And um, I wanted mine to be maybe a little less bright than that because I like quite earth toned things and very more subtle colours. I like to knit bright colours, but usually for other people. So I thought uh, I would make it in two shades of green and a cream. So here it is so far. I don't know how much of that you can see. I don't know if it's picking up on the camera very well. So it's got these hearts at the top, which I've just done. Just done the little hearts. And then these patterns beneath there. Here are some trees. And then the corrugated ribbing at the bottom. And I love it very much. I think it's just beautiful. And it's really nice to be knitting something for myself because I, I've been knitting a lot of Christmas gifts, but even during the year I knit a lot for other people. Um, which I really like to do, I especially love to knit for my kids. Um, but it is really nice to knit something for me and I'm so happy with it. You know when you're just knitting something in every row, you think, oh that's gorgeous, what a lovely pattern. So I'm really pleased with how it's coming along and I just want to finish it now and be able to wear it. It's in four ply wool, in fingering weight wool. And I think hers, I think Sophia's um, ones are knitting, I'm not sure, maybe Finnel, Rauma Finnel. Um, it's, it's one that's like quite rustic. Um, this one is knit in alpaca. So this is Lang Baby Alpaca. So it's 100% baby alpaca. And these two are Drops Flora, which is a wool alpaca blend, but very soft and they feel really comparable actually, the, the different ones and um, so it's come up to be lovely and soft and again I really like alpaca so it's nice to be making something for myself with alpaca wool. So hopefully by next time I'll have a little bit more of that to show you. Hopefully by next time I'll be able to show you my dad's sweater. Maybe I'll try it on, it will be a bit big on me and you can see it. Um, so those are my main works in progress. I have a few others. I actually have a few from before Christmas which I can um, drag out and hopefully get finished once my dad's jumper and Mel's socks are done. Um, including a, a really lovely cabled jumper for Robin which I've been knitting all year. I don't know why it's been so slow. I think I've just been picking it up in between other projects and doing like a few rows here and there and I've never got it done. But it's lovely actually. It's, in a really dark red and it's um, got lots of cables and seed stitch so it's very textured and cosy and I think it would be so cute on him. Um, so I'll get that finished and I'm feeling a real hankering for cables so I think I'm, I've been planning my own design and I've designed a few bits before though I've never published patterns but I have an Etsy shop where I take commissions for bespoke knitted items and I mostly do Christmas stockings but I also take commissions for sweaters and all sorts so um, I've designed quite a few things through that where people tell me what kind of thing they want and I design it or where I design something for my kids or myself but I've been really inspired by um, knitters like Kia at Kia's Bod who um, just improvises and designs so many things and I really love watching her podcasts when she says talks about how she's made something and she loves it and she's made it the way she knows that she'll love it um, and I think that's that's a really good way to think about knitting that instead of being really rigid with it you can you can find out what you love and and do that and make something that you really love and that's the great thing about knitting so um, yeah so I, I, I really like designing and inventing my own things but mostly colour work I really love colour work and I design a lot of colour work things so I, I have this idea to publish some of my patterns next year. Um, but in the moment, what I'm planning out and sketching out is a design for a cable cardigan, um, which I'm thinking will have raglan sleeves with a cable along the raglan and um, then cables along the front and the back and reverse stockinette in between. And I want to put um, one or maybe two patch pockets on the cardigan 
and I want the patch pockets to have colour work because I have a really clear idea of what I'm going to put on them. So everything else is going to be plain but then just a little tiny bit which I might even do an embroidery or a duplicate stitch on the on the pockets. So I'll let you know how that goes. I'm really looking forward to casting it on um, and I have the wool already. So there's a lovely um, podcast called the Fox's Blog podcast by um, a lovely lady in New Zealand. And I, I've never been to New Zealand but I've always wanted to go because I love nature and I love hiking, going out for long walks when my body will let me because I have um, some chronic health issues and I I'm out in the woods all the time, almost every day, and the the nature in New Zealand, the woods, the, the kind of the scenery has always just absolutely captivated me. I don't know if they're just really good at photographing it and videoing it, but every time I see pictures or videos of New Zealand, it, it looks stunning and I can't wait to get outside there and go for a walk and see all the, the amazing birds and wildlife and the trees. Um, so I've been really fascinated with it. So I quite like to watch um, podcasts from New Zealand. And in her podcast, she knits things that are actually really different from what I knit, that are very plain and elegant and stylish. She's a really stylish lady. And um, she was knitting something using this wool that looked so beautiful and the company I've written it down is Wild Earth Yarns and the wool is eight ply Polworth double knitting and it's wool and spun and so I, I couldn't resist I ordered some from New Zealand <laughs> um, but it's quite an expensive wool actually it's really nice I've got some of it here to show you crinkly crinkly bag Posted all the way from New Zealand. So here we go. Here's some, some of it here to show you. So it's undyed, wool and spun, Polworth double knitting. And it's got, it's not super wash, it's very kind of untreated, but it's actually incredibly soft, very next to skin soft. And um, it's it's beautiful. <laughs> I really love it and I can't wait to wind it up into balls and I think this is what I'm going to make my cabled jumper, my cabled cardigan out of. Um, so yeah, I'm really looking forward to that. So that's one of my plans um, for the new year. And then undeterred by how stressed I've been with the Christmas knitting, and how I never seem to finish mittens. I've been planning <laughs> to knit a pair of mittens for my dad for his birthday, which is in, um, it's at the very end of January. So maybe a foolish thing, but he, he loves Pink Floyd, the band, Pink Floyd, um, a lot. And we had to listen to it so much as children when we were with him. So uh, I couldn't help just being absolutely captivated by the Pink Floyd Mittens, which is uh, by Knitting Lotta, who has lots of amazing mitten designs. But the Pink Floyd ones are so cool. <laughs> I thought, well, my dad would just, he would just faint. So I have to make those for him. So I'm going to cast those on at some point. I've got the wool already, some four ply black and white wool and it's um, it's a really cool design if I can I'll put a picture on the screen and you can see um, so that's my other plan for the new year and finally um, one of my plans I'm most looking forward to is to make the chanterelle um, jumper chanterelle sweater which is again by Kia from Kia's Bod and I have just been in love with that since I first saw it and then I got a couple of skeins of really nice um, hand dyed yarn and I was wondering what to do with them and I thought oh yeah that would be perfect so I can show you the the yarn and the color the plain color that I've chosen to pair with it um, hold on a second okay so here is the hand dyed yarn it's from Mr B of Bird Street UK and it's the colorway is called Satsuma in my stocking it's one of the Christmas colorways 
and I am going to pair it with this Novita Venla wool, which is in, um, I'm not sure what this colour is called, I think it's oats. And it's um, come off a bit yellow, but it's it's a, a kind of chestnutty brown. Well, no, a bit lighter, hazelnutty brown. And um, there are flecks of that kind of colour um, in this. I don't know if it's coming across very well, but there are there are little bits of it which I think will be picked up really nicely. So I'm going to pair these two together um, for the chanterelle sweater. So that's something I cannot wait to cast on. I think it's going to be very beautiful. I have a few other things on the needles again from before. Before the Christmas knitting began, I started my Christmas knitting in November um, because I have such a big family to knit for. And before then I was knitting um, a lovely lace weight, very pale pink sweater with a lace yoke, but it's bottom up so I'm, I'm knitting plain on the body, I'm still only part way through the body, um, and then I've got to do the sleeves and then the lace bit at the end. It's, the fancy yoke is like a reward, I think, that's why I like doing bottom up um, yoke sweaters. And that's again for Madeline, my daughter's little friend, who is a very delicate and pink kind of person, and I, I think she'll look so adorable in it. And maybe I'll try and get that off the needles before I start some of these other things, or maybe like, realistically maybe i'll just be weak and cast them on too <laughs> but uh, i will get there i will get there so i think that's all my plans um I'm, i have a bunch of socks which again i'm gonna i'm gonna sit down and just show you all my socks and i i would like to finish some of them finishing some socks would also be a good plan for 2021 so i think that's quite enough to keep you going with for now that's a lot of things um to do in 2021 lots of knitting which is lovely. It's lovely to have good knitting plans. Um, I'd love to hear about your knitting plans for 2021. Um, maybe drop me a comment below and let me know what are you planning to make uh, and why? And are you going to knit more for yourself? Are you going to knit things for other people? Um, do you have things that you'd like to finish? Do you have um, a small stash of single mittens and socks like me <laughs> that you would like very much to, to complete? Just drop a comment and let me know. I would love to see it. To, I would love to see that. Okay, I will probably not see you now um, until after Christmas, but I will hopefully be able to do a, another episode of this podcast next week, which will be just a few days post Christmas. Um, might be a little challenging as Robin will be at home from school. <laughs> So he might make a few surprise cameos because um, he's just not capable of understanding that I'm podcasting. So he, he wouldn't get that. But he might come and say hi because he does like to wave at a camera. Um, but I will finish for now with another poem from Gillian Clark. And I hope you have a fantastic Christmas uh, if you celebrate it. And if you don't, I hope you just have a lovely, quiet week. I hope you have a really peaceful time. A winter... Um, or summer if you're in the the southern <laughs> hemisphere is in full swing and it's a good time for knitting. I wish you much knitting and much coziness. So the next poem is uh, called Alchemy. All night the moon stares at the stream strumming its way over stones, stopping it dead in its dream, gazes at the field's ghost, where all the white night long, no mouse, fox, hare has passed. Moon, witch, goddess, alchemist, old stone, strikes trees to iron, silver, steel, stills sheep where they stand asleep in their bones till dawn, the sun on the sill of the world, when all the night work of the moon is hallowed, haloed,
turned to gold. So Merry Christmas from me and I'll see you soon.